the path on which the Christian walk walks is a path of tribulation and persecution but also of victory yes. ensured and assured by God and the power that keeps him going regardless that's why you can choose to lose you can choose to pay the price knowing that you win the prize anyway hello and welcome back tbp family and thank you for joining us on the biblical perspective Today, we're on study number four, which is entitled Standing for the Truth. And we're continuing on our series of studies on the topic for the second quarter of the year, um, which is the great controversy. So you're here with myself, Colleen Dixon, and with Pedro. And we're both taking this study with you today. And um, before we go into the word Pedro, um, I will start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and your grace towards us and your ability to teach us more about who you are through your word. Be with those who are viewing and watching this video today. And I pray, Lord, that you'll bless them and help them to understand your word in a new light. Lord, continue to be with our viewers and bless them with all manner of blessings, Lord, that only you can. I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pedro, standing for truth. Um, and the idea of standing for truth means different things for um, different people. And um, truth is also, for some, subjective. So um, I wanted to ask, relating to this, um, what does it actually mean to stand for truth, but in a biblical context? Well, I'm glad you say in the biblical context, because as you said, this can be applied or that question can be asked in various fields and situations. Now, building on our last study, mm -hmm. standing for the truth requires first understanding the difference between light and darkness. Yes. Yes. Because light is truth, darkness is light. It's yes. Darkness is lies. Yes. So you need to understand the difference. Mm. Uh, yes, sorry. And, and, okay. and let, let, let me just finish to answer this. You need to understand the difference between um, light and darkness, truth and lies, God and Satan, and you need to choose intentionally God no matter what over Satan. You are asking, what does it mean to stand for the truth in the biblical context? And let me just add this before you go. It also means understanding that there is a price. Right. Okay. And understanding that there is also a prize. Mm, yes. Now, what were you saying? Yes, I was saying that um, in our last study as well, we talked about this, this whole idea about grey areas. And I think that's important when it comes to standing for the truth. And um, we did discuss, or you discussed the idea that, um, you know, lightness and darkness are opposed and they are um, in opposition and they are different. And this whole idea of grey area, um, as you said, in the physical world, it's like mixing black and white. And you can do that with painting. But when it comes to spiritual things, there is you can't really do that there that really doesn't exist when we think about it and i think that's an important point even in this study when it yeah. talks about they coexist but they the don't truth. mix yes now on the idea of price and prize i want you to read for me in revelation chapter 2 verse 10. okay yes. it says it says fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison and you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days but be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life standing for the truth mm. because Entail that's sacrifice yes standing for the truth this is what you're asking me um here what it means is to offer 
offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. Now, that does not necessarily mean that you're going to be killed by um, being thrown to lions or burned at the stake. Because you know what? At any time you choose Christ, you die for him. Mm. Are you with me? So, standing for the truth means you may need to also be burned at the stake of ha or have your head rolled away from your body or be reduced to ashes at the stake. But, one way on or another, it is to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, sacrifice. To God, and that is the entire book of Revelation. The text that we have just read here it encapsulates the entire book of Revelation, and the message is dedicated to that. Right, okay. The price and, and the, the price, price. Mm. and the difference between truth and lies and what it means to stand mm -hmm. for one and fall for the other yes yes but um is this the is this the case for all christians pedro is this the case for everyone um i would say remember remember that from the foundation of the world you have that separation between what Light and darkness. Light and darkness. And we saw that this became a permeating theme throughout the Bible. And in life, we do experience this. Now, your question I hear is, is it the case for all Christians that they have to face mm. the question of price and price? Mm. All right. Read for me. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 21, please. It says, Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. So Jesus is speaking about the, the power of the sower, right? And he is saying, One ground receives the word with joy, but when and, and it springs up. Yes. But when tribulation comes. Until trouble comes, yes. Right? So what we need to understand is that darkness is a weapon used by the enemy to destroy the faith of those who have accepted Christ. But light is also a destructive, offensive weapon to destroy mm. darkness yes. also in the lives of people. Now, there is no way you're going to be a Christian and not engage in this. This parable defines what it is for all of us, depending on the decision we make as to how we are going to handle the question of light and darkness. Are you with me? I want you to... Um, so tribulation and persecution will naturally come to all Christians. But when we talk about tribulation and persecution, very often in our minds we only see being thrown to the lions, being yes. burned at the, the stake, stake, being destroyed by, you know, or some groups like of people beheaded. and so on and so forth. Sorry? Beheaded. Yeah, being beheaded and so on and so forth. But it's not necessarily just that. It may be other things. Read for me. Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 to 25, please. It's, it says, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, 
and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he said, Speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and the dividing of time. Okay, so what we see here is in the book of Daniel is the part I want you to focus on is the saints. It would seem we'll have for a period of time to go through what we would call persecution and tribulation and they will be handed over to the enemy who will do with them what he wants to do and those will lose their lives but notice that this text is not saying that those saints will succumb to the enemy by doing what he expects them to do which is to renounce Christ. their faith mm -hmm. in Christ are you with me therefore they are suffering and they are paying a price for their faith but at the same time they are winning the prize are you with me yes so tribulation comes in many different forms and shape but it is always the opportunity to win by losing mm. as far as the faith of the Christian is concerned now I want you to read another text uh, for me which is Revelation 12 verses verse 6 please Okay, and it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that she should f feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Okay, the same period of time that we hear about in uh, Daniel. Time, time, and half a time. This is, if you count it prophetically, the same as what you have just read in the book of Revelation. So that tells me there is consistency when the Bible speaks about the saints being under tribulation and persecution for the sake of their faith so that they can lose by winning. Yes. Or win by losing. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. But winning the prize. Now, I want you to read for me Revelation 17, verse 6, please. Okay. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Again, what these texts are telling us is that persecution from the enemy of God, the side of darkness, against those who choose the side of light, has always been, and historically has always made the reality of their lives. And it will continue until the conflict is over. When one side wins over the other but until that time because your question is is it for all christians mm. right yes the answer is yes mm. but you don't have to worry about this because in this text you hear about the woman the church the children of god being provided yes and protected and protected mm. They are still losing their lives, paying the price, but still winning the prize. Are you with me? Now, I want you to read for me in Jude, um, verse 3, please. Okay. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you 
and exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Like earnestly contend. Okay. Does that make it clear? The path on which the Christian walk, walks is a path of tribulation and persecution, but also of victory yes. ensured and assured by God and the power that keeps him going regardless. That's why you can choose to lose. You can choose to pay the price knowing that you win the prize anyway. Yes. You with me? Yes. I want you to read another text for me, which is Revelation 2 verse 7. Okay. And it says... It says, He that has a hear, let him hear what the Spirit speaketh unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. There are seven churches in the book of Revelation when you read in, right around there. And all of them contain that phrase about overcoming. Yes, to him that overcometh. Now, what you need to do is prophetically, those churches are symbolic of the Christian. Um, ex the, the, the time, the seven churches, the, the, the time from the formation of the Christian church to the, the ultimate victory when Jesus comes back, all of them have this call to overcome, which means tribulation and persecution is a natural thing because there are two forces at play, one wanting the destruction of humanity and the other one the salvation of the same. Mm -hmm. God wants the salvation of Christians and, sorry, the salvation of humanity. Satan wants the destruction of oh. humanity and the two are fighting for it but God is winning that was the case yesterday yes that's going to be the case today mm -hmm. I mean that is the case today yes. and that's going to be the case tomorrow until Jesus puts an end yes. to it yes yeah um so Pedro I want to be the person that um, stands for truth, and I'm sure many of our of our viewers um, want to be that Christian. Also, want to be that person that seeks after light and lives in the light and walks in the light. But what does it actually um, look like? Like, what does standing for truth look like physically, like or practically, like? Yeah, I understand your question. Yes. Read for me. Acts chapter 5, verses 17 to 20, and then 25, and then 28 to, 20, to 33, please. Okay, so 17 to 20, and it says, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sajidis, <laughs> and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, So 20, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And did you say 25? 25, 25? and then 28 to 33. Okay. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the man whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And now 28 to 33. Saying, Did not we surely command ye that ye should not teach in, in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and indeed to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our father rise up, Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him that God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witness of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And then finally, 30, 33, when they heard that, they were cut 
to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So what does that look physically to stand for the truth? Here is an example right there where you see the apostles wholeheartedly stood against all opposition to their faith and their mission given by Jesus Christ to them. They died for him. They eventually sealed their testimony and their commitment to him with their blood. This is what it looks like to stand for the truth. Another text I want you to read for me is Revelation 12, verse 14, please. Yeah, and it says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. You see, um, in uh, uh, apocalyptic uh, prophecies, the, the woman is the church. The church is the apostles that you've just seen there and all the other believers in Christ. And what we see is in the midst of that persecution, in the midst of those tribulations, even though they lost their lives, some of them, the mission went forward because God protected the mission as he protected these people while they died. This is amazing because when the time comes, these people will come back yes, they will. winning the prize. Mm. Are you with me? Yeah. So God has not mm. abandoned his children. And the period of time that is spoken here is a period of persecution that can be identified in history where uh, between 538 and 1798, where millions of Christians lost their lives, but I would prefer to say sealed their testimony mm -hmm. with their blood and won the prize by paying the price. Millions of them, some of them were entire communities like the Voldenses, mm -hmm. who were almost driven to extinction because of persecution persecution on them for the word of God, the truth that they wanted to keep pure and pass on to other people. And then we have the example of individuals like the apostles, for instance, um, like, like the apostle Paul, who had his head cut off, but he said, I'm ready to go now. Are you with me? Because he knew that he was not gone forever and would be back for the prize. You have in history, in the period I spoke about 538 to 1718, you have people like um, William Tendall, for instance, who was strangled and then burned at the stake. He, what was his crime? His devotion to producing the word of God in a language that people could understand and read for themselves. Are you with? And there are many others who went through the same experience. They were expelled from their country. They were buried alive. They were burned at the stake. They were dispossessed. They were exiled. They were thrown into into wild beasts all sorts of things happened to them yes. what was their crime being faithful that's what it looks like to stand for the truth but there is another settled very very subtle sorry way of standing against the enemy Oh, the enemy has a very subtle way of persecuting yes. and obtaining the same result that he wants without trying to discourage your faith through killing you. Right, yes. Just stay away from the word. Yes. Have Jesus. Right, okay. But don't mind I want to about what he says. Yeah. Leave your Christian life yeah. away from thus saith the Lord. Mm. 
the result is even more effective because while all these people died yes there are witnesses from persecution yeah and and tribulation yeah their death brought even yeah. more it's like a witness and an encouragement to others are you with me mm. so standing for the truth that's what it means i want you to read for me but i just but want to say in contrast though if you um you know live your life as a christian but not in the word um that's a that's a win for satan because others see that and god's name and god's and god's um god's word is um is brought into disrepute yeah 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 absolutely i want you to read for me john chapter 11 verse 25 please Okay, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. Okay, read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, please. Though therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among my witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ what does it mean physically to stand for the truth it means paying the price like the Voldenses, like the yes. disciples like john huss like william Tendall, and a whole list of them yet moving forward the plan of salvation by keeping the truth alive and sharing it with others. All these people die just because of that. Mm. John Huss refused to place human authority, reason and tradition above God's word. And those in place in the religious system thought he was only worth of dying. Yes. And they burnt him at the stake. Here is what it means to stand for the truth. Keep the word of God as it is and share it with others as it is. Even if it could cost you your life. Mm -hmm. Um, in regards to costing you your life, Pedro, um, we live in the 21st century and um, people aren't burnt at the stake and people don't have their head chop chopped off like in this day and age. So would you say that we're living in a different time now and that persecution is no longer a reality? Oh, I would say it is more reality than ever. It just has changed its form. And I touched on it earlier. In the 21st century, what we have is persecution and tribulation through theories, through concepts, through expression of human freedom, where you will place your, your reasoning above God's word where you will you will feel free without any danger to reject salvation and encourage others to do that this is what I was saying when I was saying there is a more subtle way for the enemy to succeed in doing what he tried to do with the saints over the the, the years could you read for me in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, please. Okay, and it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, tra trace breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heed, heedy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captives, captive silly women laden with sin, led away with diverse lust, 
ever learning and never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. The text that you have just read has to do with the 21st century because it says in the last days. Not only has he got to do with the 21st century but this is a Christian context where it says people will have a form of godliness but they will deny the power of godliness. The power of godliness comes from the application of the word of God to your life. Are you with me? Jesus said, we read it in John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. You with me? So the form of godliness is when you walk around with the word of God in your hand, but it has no impact on, on your, your mind. Mm -hmm. No impact in your life. Now remember that the word is incarnated in Christ. Are you with me? So denying the word is to deny Christ. I don't care how much you sing about Christ. Mm. You, 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 you with me? Yes. In the 21st century, that's the form of persecution that the enemy is using because we feel so free, not threatened by the powers that were back in the day chopping people off and, and, and imprisoning people and exiling people and burying people alive and doing all, none of that is happening today. No, it's not. So, relax. Mm. Okay? <laughs> this Jesus thing, we're going to do it, but we don't have to do it with all this stuff. Mm. Are you with me? Yeah, you can just do it in a way that's pleasing to you. That's darkness. Mm. That's persecution. Mm. That's tribulation. But you don't feel it. Are you with me? Yes. So, I want you to read for me another text, which is in Hebrews chapter 14. Sorry, chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, please. Yes, and it says... It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood... He also himself likewise took part of the same, that thou, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and fifteen, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary was shared to destroy the power of the enemy in the lives of people. He is intentionally going out to deceive and have them lost. Mm -hmm. That is his consistent ways from the beginning. But that does not need to happen to you. Why? Because Jesus has paid the price for you to come out of that condemnation. But it would take for you to accept that sacrifice and have that word mm. active in your life. The truth of the word of God standing for the truth is first accepting the truth yes. and living by the truth yes. so that when the persecution or tribulation comes you stand in the truth yeah you stand firm for god but if you don't have the truth first you're not going to be able to stand mm -hmm. in the truth and for the truth are you with me yes. what happens today in the 21st century is that we seem to be more inclined to listen to our own thoughts yes we like hearing our own voices <laughs> we like the sound of our own songs Mm. as opposed yes. to the sound of the voice of the Redeemer. Yeah, it's like we prefer to live by human reason. Instead of living by the wisdom of God. Mm. Are you with me? So that is in itself an aggressive form of persecution that the enemy is raging mm. on Christians, but they do not see it 
Now, this has always been the case, but more so today, mm. as the other things that used to happen are not happening anymore in terms of the persecution, the, the hostility, yes. the physical hostility that the enemy waged against the children of God. So that means we have to be intentional as the people who died because they were physically persecuted. We have to be as intentional as they were, even if we don't go through the same things that they are going through because it is the same powers at play and it is still the same conflict that they engage in and you still yes you still in the middle of it for one or for the other so there is still a price to pay yes don't be fooled by how things look like mm -hmm. there is still a price to pay but the good news is there is still a prize to win mm -hmm. yes and that's what we we're called to do win the prize in christ yes win the prize in christ Okay, um, thank you for that study, Pedro, and um, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, um, viewers, for joining us for our Bible study today. Please um, subscribe to The Biblical Perspective if you've not done so before, and also like this video. We also have a live that takes place every Saturday at 3 p.m. GMT, so please join us for those studies also. They're on um, current um, topics, so please join us for those also. So thank you once again, and I'll see you in our next study with the Biblical Perspective.